Okay, in this video, I'd like to continue on with my tutorials on vector calculus for electromagnetism. This is video number 12, and I'm going to discuss the divergence of a vector. I'd like to draw your attention to my website, universityphysicstutorials.com. So there are three previous videos which are relevant to this one. Number 11, I discussed the nabla, and that was part 2 on that. Number 7, I discussed the gradient. And in number 6, I discussed the nabla part 1. So a bit of revision, which I'm going to keep mentioning for the moment. If you're talking about a vector, let's say A in this case, there are three things you can do with the vector. You can multiply it by a scalar, and there's only one way you can multiply a vector by a scalar. The outcome, if you do that, you will get back a vector. Then, if you multiply a vector, let's say A in this case, by another vector, there are two ways you can do it. The first way is by the dot product, and the second way is by the cross product. But each of these is known by a different name and it implies or kind of suggests what sort of a function you get back after you do the multiplication. So the dot product is also known as the scalar product, so you get back a scalar. And the, uh, the cross product is also known as the vector product and you get back a vector. Now, this time though, we're dealing with the nabla, okay? And the nabla is not just a vector, it's a vector operator. So for that reason, it doesn't just do these, it doesn't, well, it does something similar to these, but it doesn't do them exactly in that fashion. So let's see what the nabla operator can do. So the nabla operator can operate in three ways as follows. It can operate on a scalar, and there's only one way the nabla operator can operate on a scalar, and you'll get back a vector. Similarly, like you got up here when you multiplied a vector by a scalar, you got back a vector. So you get back a vector. You can operate with the nabla on another vector using the dot product or the cross product or the scalar or vector product. So that implies that if I operate on a vector using my nabla operator using the dot product, I'll get back a scalar. And if I operate on my vector with the nabla operator using the cross or vector product, I'll get back a vector. So we saw in the previous video that when we operated uh, the nabla operator on a scalar, we got back a vector. So now, and we call that the gradient. Now we're going to operate on a vector, but we're going to use the dot product or the scalar product, and I'm going to show you that gives you back a scalar. We call this function the divergence. And finally, in, in a later video, you'll see that operating using the cross product gives you back the curl. So let's show you how to do it first of all. It's, it's in fact, pretty straightforward. So just a reminder on the dot product. By the way, if you want to look up how to do a dot product, look at video number two. So a dot product, let's say the dot product of A and B is simply the magnitude of A, the magnitude of B, and you multiply it by the cosine of the angle in between. But we like to do things in components, so that means that, let's say A is going to be A sub X in the I hat direction, plus A sub Y in the J hat direction, plus a sub z in the k hat direction. Okay? And in this case, our we'll say our other vector is going to be our nabla. So it's going to be del del x in the i hat direction, plus del del y in the j hat direction, plus del del z in the uh, k hat direction. Now, an important point to note here is, is the following. Because we're talking about vectors, we, well, in, in particular unit vectors, we see that they are orthogonal. So let's say here we have, this is i hat, this is j hat, and this is k hat. If you multiply, we'll say, i hat and j hat, or you take their dot product, well, by this particular equation here, their cos, the cosine of the angle between them is going to be 90 degrees. So i hat dot j hat is zero. Similarly, i hat dot k hat is going to be zero. And, I, and uh, j hat dot k hat is going to be zero because they're all orthogonal or they're all perpendicular. So if you then multiply with say i hat by i hat, i hat dot i hat, or j hat dot j hat, or k hat dot k hat, well, what are you going to get back? You're going to get back in each time one. Now, if you multiply minus i hat by i hat, you get minus one or if you do this, okay, you might get minus one. Similarly, if you put in another, a second minus sign, each of these would become plus one. Okay, and that should make pretty pretty straightforward sense to you. So, 
in its most general term, you can think about multiplying the, the dot product as this. You could say, well, I multiply a sub x in, in the i-hat direction by this one, by this one, and by this one. But if you look about it, so let's say, let's just do one of them. So it'll be a sub x, uh, del del x, um, we'll say, let's say, if we're to multiply, let's say, a, uh, a dot, the gradient. Let's just put it this way for the moment, okay? It doesn't mean, it doesn't mean much yet. So that's fine, so we're going to get i-hat dot i-hat. But it's going to be a sub x del del y j hat dot i hat or i hat dot j hat plus a sub x uh, del del z i hat dot k hat. So we see here, of course, that all the terms in the middle go to zero because they're perpendicular. And we just get this a sub x del del x term here. And this, that the vectors go away and we just get equal to one there. So it just becomes a sub x del del x. So for the same reason, you can just when you're doing the dot product, you could ignore the kind of the cross terms because they will all they will all sum to zero because they are orthogonal unit vectors. So you just multiply the i hat components together, the j hat components together, and the k hat components together, getting a, a scalar, of course. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the divergence. It's defined as follows. Note by the way, the nabla is first, so it's going to be del del x, the i hat plus del del y in the j hat, plus del del z in the k hat direction. And what we're going to do is dot it with a sub x in the i hat direction, plus a sub y in the j hat direction, and finally a sub z in the k hat direction. Now, a, an equivalent, and perhaps easier way to write it, is using impl implying that we have the, uh, the unit vectors by with these commas. Okay, so another way of doing it is like this, a sub z. So we imply that, we'll say the first entry is i hat, second entry is, is j hat, and the third entry is k hat. So if we just do the, uh, the divergence, or calculate the, the cross, or excuse me, the dot product, simply it's going to be uh, del a sub x del x plus del a sub y del y plus del a sub z del z. This is called the divergence. Okay, so simple, great. But the reason it's not used, excuse me, the reason it is used is not just because, um, you know, it's easy, to, easy, it's easy to, cal to calculate. It has a geometric meaning, and that's the main reason we use it for electromagnetism. It, it measures the tendency of your vector field to diverge. So let's say if you had a vector, a function, let's say f, um, function of, I don't know, it could be a function of x, y, and z, it doesn't matter. But let's say you went and sketched it, and somewhere, we'll say there's the origin here, and you sketched your, your, vector, your vector field, and let's say it does this, it starts maybe this le length, and then it becomes this length, and then it becomes this length, and so on. So you can see that it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So what it's... What this vector field is tending to do is to diverge away from the origin. Okay, so we would say that this has a positive divergence. So if you calculate the divergence and you plot it, you'll find that a vector field or a vector, let's say, let's say A, let's call it A because that's what I've been going with the whole time. So if I plot A, you'll find that when I plot the divergence, the vectors are getting bigger and bigger as I get away from the origin. So we call it, we say the vector field is diverging, in other words, it has a positive divergence. Or if you want to get another one, if you can imagine some sort of a, a point, and let's say the vectors are coming out of it isotropically, which means invariant with respect to direction. So, but they're getting bigger each time. Once again, you would say that this is a diverging vector field. And you know that because if you calculate the divergent, the divergence, and you plug in the point, in this case, let's say x0, y0, z0, you'll find that it has a, it's, it's a number greater than zero. If it's a negative number, of course, then it, it has a negative divergence. But what is the meaning of it? We say that if the divergence is positive, we, we say that it, we're after finding a source. And if we find a negative divergence, we're talking about a sink or a drain. And the reason we talk about this is, if the divergence is positive, your field is tending to get bigger and bigger as you get away from the origin. Well, that's exactly what a source does. Think about, um, 
think about let's say for example you had say you had um, let's say you had your sink okay here's your sink and there's a hole in the middle of your sink and what you've attached to it here is is a is a pipe and a pump okay and what you're going to do is you're going to pump water up this up this pipe into your basin so at time t is equal to zero the basin will be empty at time let's say just greater than zero let's say there's water here at time you know let's say at another increment of time the water might be here and so on okay so the point is here there is, is the the water is tending to diverge away from uh, diverge away from the point so that point can be considered a source and then conversely if something has a negative divergence going back to the the analogy with the uh, the sink let's say there's our there's our sink and it's filled to the brim with water and then we come along we put we we put a uh, a drain in it well what's going to happen is the the water is going to tend to try and converge on a single point and escape down the drain so what we're looking at here is a, is a, a point which has negative divergence which indicates that we have a sink or a drain all right so um in actual fact, just, just to tell you that it, that's a good way of looking for electric charge because, say, a positive, I'm just going to jump ahead, let's say if you have positive charge, the electric field, um, it will say, leaves, the electric field leaves positive, positive charge. It leaves positive charge. So, if we were to graph it, we'll say, it's, the electric field will say, it gets, it kind of, it seems, it gets bigger as you go away from the charge. So that would suggest that your charge is, is, is a source, and that's an actual fact that, that is correct. Your charge is the source of the electric field. But that's just jumping jumping ahead. So I think I've said all I really want to say. Thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends, subscribe to my channel, and you might visit universityphysicstorials.com.